20 years ago, cancer was not as common as it is today. Almost everyone we know today knows someone or has heard of someone who has been affected by the disease. Everywhere we look today, we know someone who knows someone who knows someone who has been affected by cancer. So today on Catholic Faith Forum, we shall be talking about cancer awareness and what can be done about it. And May, and before we go further into the gist, let's take this short break before we meet our very, very interesting guests. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. Today on Catholic Faith Forum, we shall be talking about cancer awareness and what should be done about it. Today on the show, today we have two amazing guests. I'm so excited to have them in the house. Our first guest is Dr. Cornelius Emejulu. Thank you for being here, sir. Thank you, May. And our second guest is Dr. Omolola Salako, a consultant radiation oncologist and founder of Sir Berkeley Cancer Care. Welcome, ma. Thank you very much. We're so happy to have you here. Absolutely. I'm sure you're ready to give it to us, you know, and answer everything. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So let's dive into the gist of today. First of all, what is cancer? Cancer is a disease. Um, cancer basically is a group of cells that were previously normal and they've become abnormal. Um, therefore, cancer cells mean cells that the body cannot control anymore. Uh, they divide very fast, they divide abnormally, they compete with the body for nutrients, blood supply. So anything that grows very fast and has the ability to spread to distant sites is called cancer. Okay, um, Dr. Cornelius, why are there different types of cancer? Because we have heard of so many, I'm not sure I can keep track. Uh, uh, there are many types of cancer, just like she said, every cell of the body can go abnormal. So based on that, you can have different types of cancer based on the different types of cells you have in the body. So you can have different types of cancer, cancer of the skin, cancer of the bone, cancer of the, uh, name it, different types of cancer based on that. Okay, Dr. Mola, can you list some of the most common types of cancer that we have today? So in Nigeria, the top two cancers in women, breast cancer, and cervical cancer. In men, prostate cancer. Other cancers that are very common, colon cancer, liver cancer. In children, they have uh, certain cancers that are very common, actually very common in Nigeria, uh, and certain parts of Africa, like um, Wilms tumor, which is a cancer of the kidney, and uh, leukemias, which is blood cancer in, uh, in children. It can also affect adults too. Uh, areas where cancer has not been known to occur. Uh, we haven't seen cancer of the hair, cancer of the teeth, cancer of the nails, but every other part uh, is known to have cancer. So you actually said just three parts of the body that... Oh, that's scary. Okay, so are you saying that every part of the body can actually be affected by cancer, apart from these three you just listed? Absolutely. So. Uh, for example, um, he mentioned skin cancer. Uh, there is melanoma, which is a, an aggressive form of skin cancer, uh, which is the, cell that, the cells that make the brown pigment, pigments in our skin. Cancer can arise from there. The blood vessels uh, in the skin, cancers can arise from there. The fat in the skin, cancer can arise from there. So just the skin alone, 50 types of cancer can occur from the skin. Wow, that sounds so scary. Yes, I know. Okay, so how long does it actually take for these cancer cells to develop? It depends on the origin of the cancer. So, for example, I'll talk about cervical cancer. Cervical cancer is caused by a virus, human papilloma virus, that is uh, sexually transmitted or is transmitted during sex, be it oral, anal, or, or the normal route sex. Uh, this virus in particular causes head and neck cancers, tongue cancers, uh, when it's found in the mouth. This same virus causes um, vaginal cancer, cervical cancer, penile cancer. This same virus causes anal cancers in people who have um, uh, uh, it's common in the gay uh, population. 
So this virus usually is transmitted during sex. Say, for example, a girl engages in sex at age 20. This virus stays till 30, 40, and at 40 years, about 20 years later, begins to form cancer. Okay. So for cervical cancer, it's caused by a virus that takes 10 to 20 years to cause cancer. Okay. In breast cancer, what we say is for a woman to detect a lump as small as um, a corn seed, for example, mm -hmm. it would have started 15 years earlier or more. Uh, the fact that she's coming with a symptom now in 2018 doesn't mean it just started. It probably started maybe Long 10, time ago. 15 years ago. Okay, so are you saying, you mentioned them um, sexually transmitted. So are you saying cervical cancer can be avoided if the person is, a person is not sexually active? It is the only cancer that is preventable amongst all the cancers. So uh, there's primary prevention. If you are a virgin, you've not engaged in sex, it means you haven't been exposed to that virus. We don't find cervical cancer in virgins. Um, but for women who have engaged in sex, they must have screening. And that helps us to detect the early stages. And then uh, we promote uh, vaccination for young girls because, again, this is one of the cancers where we can prevent it uh, and build immunity against the virus should the girl at an older age pick up the virus. So we um, promote vaccination for young girls who have not been exposed from the ages of nine years old. Okay, Dr. Colonius, how can a person tell if they have cancer? Well, that's the challenge. Um, cancer is one disease that you cannot really tell when you have it at the early stages because there's no symptom as at then. But like she said at the beginning, um, cancer cells take time to multiply. And so at that initial stage when they multiply or when they are multiplying, the person wouldn't know he has or she has anything. It's later on, after some years, when the cells have multiplied and started secreting some hormones, some chemicals that can cause damages in the body, that's when the person will start seeing some symptoms like weight loss or bleeding or that his mm -hmm. blood level is low and then goes to the hospital and then they find out that, oh, this person has cancer. And that even makes it worse in this part of the world where people don't routinely go for um, checkups. Checkups, yeah. So if we're talking about developed countries where people go for checkups, especially because of the health insurance scheme, which is working very well there, mm -hmm. yeah, people pay out of pocket. Yes. So they are Seriously. reluctant to go to hospital except they have headaches or fever. So, but in developed countries where people go for regular checkups, they can easily find out, maybe during one of the routine screenings, mm -hmm. blood tests or whatever, or scan, find out that, oh, this particular cell is going haywire and then pick it at that early stage and start treating. But in this part of the world, people don't ever know they have cancer until it has got to that stage where it's very uh, difficult to treat. So, so what can we do to actually change this? Like how can people get more aware that they should actually go check themselves and make sure they don't have this? Uh, well, uh, like I said, the only way to actually know if to follow up on this since early is regular health checks. Apart from the other um, preventive measures, which we'll talk about later, um, the best way to battle this um, issue is to um, go for regular health checks mm -hmm. and to take health seriously. Most people, when they have slight symptoms, may, which may mean um, early signs of the disease, they just take it as not something not important and then they just overlook it. And, so for this particular aspect, we we'll look at um, regular health checks and uh, reporting on time when you feel sick. Whenever you feel sick, you report on time. So those are the things you can do. Okay, um, Dr. Molola, there's, it's, I don't understand why it is now, or I'm saying in recent times, that cancer became so rampant. Everywhere you look, there's someone with cancer. How come in those days we didn't hear about it? Is that it was there and we just didn't hear about it or that it wasn't as common? It goes both ways, actually. Um, in the first instance, uh, Nigeria, the government, started investing very seriously in cancer care about the time we gained our independence. And few cancer hospitals, cancer doctors were available. Fewer diagnostic services and facilities were available. 
So it's possible, likely, that uh, fewer people were reliant on traditional and herbal medicine than orthodox care. Uh, the other thing is a lot of awareness is uh, going on and people are beginning to visit the hospital more frequently. Mm -hmm. Our lifestyle is also something that has changed significantly. The type of True. food we eat, the amount of stress we face, uh, sexual lifestyle has become very, um, has become, you know, it's not as... Conservative. Yeah, it's not as conservative anymore. So uh, HIV, for example, is associated with certain uh, cancers. Uh, low immunity is associated with certain cancers. So you can see that from our lifestyle, uh, that on its own has increased the risk for certain uh, cancers. I would like to buttress his point. Okay. In the clinic, what, in the cancer clinic, what we see these days are two issues. One, there are patients who have symptoms, tummy pain, bleeding, seeing tiny blood while they are pooing or weeing, and they are dealing with these symptoms at home or they're going to the wrong doctors for so long. And this can last for a year, seeing the wrong doctors, using certain medications, being treated for typhoid and malaria for seven months. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's a type it's of something cancer, more serious. colon cancer or liver cancer. So that's one issue. Patients um, staying back at home or seeing the wrong doctors for a chronic symptom. The second issue is 70 to 80 percent of patients present late. That had been the history from when they set up the cancer hospitals. Okay. It still remains the same situation. 70 to 80 percent of my patients get to my desk when it's you can't cure, you can't control the disease, you can improve the quality of life. If they're coughing, you take care of the symptom. If they're in pain, you take care of the symptom. But to cure it, uh, is usually impossible at uh, those late stages. So awareness, if you have a symptom, it's important you report it to the doctor. There are specialists who treat certain conditions, and that's just something we have to be aware of. Okay, so what, you just listed some symptoms. What other symptoms should someone actually look out for? Okay, so uh, for breast cancer, the commonest symptom is a breast lump. It's usually not painful. Um, it's just there. Uh, it, sometimes it's painful. Uh, it may be mobile. It may move around the breast. Uh, skin changes. The skin may become um, reddish. It may be warm to touch. It may have these tiny holes like um, an orange fruit, like the pores are widening. Okay. There may be a change in the, a recent change in the size of the breast. Uh, the nipple may pull inward in an abnormal way. Some women have their breasts, uh, their nipples pulled inwards naturally, but if this is a recent pulling in and it's a bit harder to pull out the nipple, that's something to uh, cross-check. If there's bloody nipple discharge or there's a lump above the collarbone in the armpit or in the breast, those are breast symptoms. For cervical cancer, it's abnormal vaginal bleeding. Now, it is normal for a woman to bleed during her period, yes. after delivering a child. Mm -hmm. Abnormal vaginal bleeding is bleeding after sex, bleeding um, in between periods, and bleeding after menopause. Menopause is when a lady is 50 years or 60 and she has stopped seeing her period, all of a sudden she sees her period. So the second common symptom with cervical cancer is a foul-smelling vaginal discharge. Again, this is not the usual discharge that comes with period or ovulation. This is a foul smelling discharge, sometimes blood stained or is brownish and it's copious. It's a large uh, quantity. Okay. Uh, just to touch on prostate cancer, uh, again, this is common in men. It, it happens only in men. Women don't have prostate. Uh, it's common uh, from age 50 and above. Usually starts with water works problem. I can't pee well. Uh, my pee is painful when I pee. Instead of the stream going this way, it goes scattered or it's weak. Um, waist pain uh, or waking up at night to pee five times or you know, there's an increase in uh, the t number of times the man goes to the toilet. Okay, thank you very much for this point. Do you want to add anything? Yeah, um, also to talk about um, liver cancer, which um, 
um, people don't usually know because the two commonest causes of liver cancer later on, uh, starting from the initial stages, will be hepatitis B virus and alcohol, at least in this environment. Um, hepatitis B is one virus that would cause liver problems in some people and may not cause liver problems in yes, other others. people. So it may cause what we call an acute um, liver problem, which may just, after the patient has the symptoms and is treated, it may resolve, but the virus still remains in the blood okay. and hovers around looking for the best moment to strike, and those moments will be um, associated with reduced immunity or poor feeding or poor nutrition. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the virus looks for that moment and then enters the liver and starts causing damage. So liver changes occur. From a no normal liver, a person now has what you call fatty liver. From fatty liver, a person has liver cirrhosis. From liver cirrhosis, a person can now develop some form of um, liver cancer, maybe a particular carcinoma, or primary liver cell um, carcinoma. So that's one area that most people don't, uh, most people who come, come very late because they never knew they had that virus initially. So that's why these days we encourage people to know their hepatitis B virus status, not just about HIV virus, uh, because okay. hepatitis B too can cause um, liver cancer. Alcohol is also a known cause of liver damage. The same progression from a normal liver to fatty, fatty liver, liver, then to liver cirrhosis, and finally could also end up as a hepatocellular carcinoma. Okay, thank you very much. Well, we'll have to take a little break here to hear the opinions of our people from the streets. We always do that to know what people have to say about different topics. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back to continue the conversation. Um, so I don't really know if there's a particular definition for cancer because every day we keep on hearing that there is cancer of the blood, cancer of the stomach, cancer of the hands, right? So it seems to me that it's more like a tumor that just grows in one part of the body and then it's really dangerous because of it's difficult to find a way to prevent it from growing. Okay, do you know some predisposing factors? Uh, like causes of cancer? So, so... I don't really know because of the people I know that have gone through that, um, they had it in some on, in some ways I cannot really understand. But one that I frequently heard is the fact of this wireless, should I say wireless technology now or um, in rays that pass through. So you have different kinds of rays, right? The ones based on our communication systems, like telecommunication, um, some from our laptops, from so different kinds of rays. I think this is an Okay. What are some of the type of type of types of cancers you've heard so far? Cancer of the blood, cancer of the breast, cancer of is it the liver? Um, yes, I think so. All right. Thank you very much. Cancer is a uh, is a terminal disease which. Um, affects the human body, the organs, some part of the organs and the likes. Um, the types of cancer, we have um, the cancer of the intestine, okay. um, we have the, the brain cancer, skin cancer, mm -hmm. and the likes. What predisposes one to these different types of cancer? Well, uh, basically, um, as it is now in our present globalization, yeah. You know, um, we can't compare, you know, comparing back in the days where we have good vegetations, what we eat mm -hmm. and the likes. Unlike these days, you know, you have a whole lot of substances ingested, you know, in our systems who are not, which are not properly prepared. You know, you have canned foods, especially, you know, which mm -hmm. the cans are contained with, um, you know, aluminum, you know, all those heavy metals, yes. you know, that affect, because they are part of things that affect or that causes, you know, these things, especially cancer itself, you know. So I think cancer, it's a very terminal disease. When I say terminal, uh, you know, I don't want to call it chronic, because chronic, you mean sometimes you can find um, a solution to it, you know, but terminal means definitely person might go down. All right. Thank you very much. Welcome back. You heard the people's opinions about cancer. You know, that brings me to a very interesting question. 
what are some of the th things that cause cancer? As you heard someone say um, canned foods, and another person said radiation. So are these the things that really cause cancer, and what are the other things that cause cancer? So there are many myths and misconceptions about what causes cancer. Okay. Uh, but just to tackle uh, the two uh, opinions, uh, truly, there's been a lot of research on radiation from microwaves, telephones. Uh, do they cause cancer? Some group say yes, it does, and then another group says no, it doesn't. So right now, research has not put a nail, or has not knocked the nail on the head that it yes, does, it causes does. cancer. However, we, we should exercise um, precaution, reduce the amount of radiation you're exposed to, which also comes from the sun. So it doesn't matter whether you're dark-skinned or light-skinned, reduce your amount of exposure by wearing hats, um, covering your body, and just limiting the time you spend in the sun. When you're using your device, uh, yes, alternate between um, hands-free and uh, putting it directly to your air. Uh, canned food, uh, when we're talking about preservatives, generally there are some chemicals that cause cancer. Okay. Uh, and certain professions like people who fix batteries, people who do tie and dye, mm -hmm. the uh, uh, construction workers who use asbestos in building roofs and other construction products uh, are exposed to different types of chemicals. Uh, so people must be educated about what they are exposed to. I'm a radiation oncologist. I treat cancer patients with um, a linear accelerator, and that itself, my exposure to it can cause cancer. Wow. So we have a way, we wear certain uh, devices that, to protect track, yourself. That, that track the number of radiation we are exposed Excellent. to, and if we hit a certain limit, we, we get time off, uh, off work. Whoa. So certain professions are exposed to certain chemicals or radiation. Same thing with pilots and air, uh, air hostesses. Uh, when they're up, they're exposed to terrestrial radiation. Scuba divers are exposed to radiation under the sea. These are sort of natural radiation yes. sources. <laughs> so it's important to just be aware of what you should limit and what you shouldn't limit. If you're using the microwave, I'll advise stay away from it. Uh, you don't have to rest on it or be so close to the uh, microwave. Okay, so um, is cancer curable, Dr. Collins? Hmm. That question is a difficult one. Uh, it has, the answer is complicated. Um, she said at the beginning of some time that um, most of her patients come late. Actually, we that are not your specialists, we get these patients, before we refer them, they are already, they are coming at a time where it's, um, cancer usually is in stages, it's staged. They are coming at the later stages where cure is almost impossible, most times impossible. So wow. what you do for them is palliative care. So you just treat their symptoms. If they're having cough, like she said, you treat them for the cough. If they're having low blood level, you try to raise up or optimize the blood level, things like that. But ordinarily, cancer got a cut at an early stage can actually be cured. Cancer okay. cut at an early stage can actually be cured. So most patients come late. And this makes it difficult to cure the cancer, to treat the cancer. So what is done for them is palliative care, just to take care of the symptoms, to manage their symptoms until they die or a miracle happens, but most <laughs> times they die. Anyway, wow. so, um, um, so the most important thing is patients coming early. If a patient comes early and the cancer is picked at an early stage, it will most likely be cured. Okay. I'd just like to share, uh, there are cancer survivors, a lot of them. Uh, breast cancer, cervical cancer, and prostate cancers are cancers that are curable when we detect them in stage one or two. But because a lot of patients come at stage three and four, what we can do is to control the disease from spreading. But that's usually for a period of time. Mm. Abroad or in developed countries, a lot, 60 to 70 percent of these cases are, are cured. In Nigeria, can we cure these cancers? Yes, we can. For us to cure cancers, we need patients to present early. 
Okay. Whether they are being referred by a doctor or they're walking into the hospital, they need to know where to go to. So community awareness is so key. Uh, programs like this uh, help us share our messages as doctors that if you have a breast lump, if you have abnormal vaginal bleeding, if you're not peeing properly or you have a symptom that has been there for so long, find the specialist. I've spent about eight years of my career life specializing, learning how to care for cancer patients in order to cure them. But as long as patients continue to present very late and I can't cure them, even in the presence of facilities, specialists, then we're still not winning the war against cancer. It's important women and men go for their annual checks. From the age of 20, there is a battery of tests you should be doing. At the age of 20? From the age of 20. Okay. There are certain tests you should do. Your BP, you know, some blood tests. And as you get older, where we, we begin to look for certain cancers, like when a woman is 40, we ask her to do a mammogram. When a lady is 20 years old, we ask her to check her breast once a month and then see a doctor once every three years to, to check her breast. From the age of 20, if a lady has engaged in sex, she's supposed to have a pap smear once every three years. We also have the tests available, HPV DNA testing, where we find out if the woman has the virus causing cervical cancer or not. When a woman or man is 50 years and above, we recommend colonoscopy, or we ask them to give us a little bit of their feces, their poopoo, their stool, and we go and check for cancer cells in, in the stool. So there are different tests for different uh, ages. What is important is live a healthy life and then go for your annual screening. Prevention is better than cure, it's cheaper and it's wiser than cure. <laughs> okay, so is cancer contagious or genetically transmittable? Cancer is not contagious. Okay. So contagious in that if someone has breast cancer and she hugs a woman or man, she can't get it. If a woman <laughs> has breast cancer, she can feed her baby with the other breast, and the baby will not get breast cancer. Uh, if a man has prostate cancer and he has sex with his wife, he can't give her cancer. So cancer is not contagious. Is it genetically transmittable? Yes. There are certain families that have abnormal genes running from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. uh, a popular example is the actress Angelina Jolie. Yes. Yeah, in her family, a lot of them had breast cancer, ovarian cancer, and she did a blood test, which is available in Nigeria. Okay. Uh, and she checked her breast cancer genes. We call it the BRCA genes. Uh, the test showed that it was abnormal. When this test is abnormal, it means uh, she had like an 80% chance of Guessing having it. breast cancer. So she opted for a mastectomy. She removed her breasts to prevent breast cancer from occurring. And she reconstructed it. And that on its own reduces her risk of cancer. Are older people more, more prone to cancer? If yes, why? Yes, older people are prone to cancer simply because uh, the older you get, the more, the higher the chances the body can make a certain mistake. Uh, basically, aging processes like wear and tear, uh, the same cells are being produced, uh, some of them die off. That's the normal process for aging. So every time, the more, can the more normal cells divide, the higher the chances uh, a cancer cell may be produced. Also, with aging process, it means the person has been exposed to certain factors that may increase uh, their risk over time. Uh, the sun, uh, inhaling fumes, be it from the road or from kerosene stove or direct smoking or passive smoking. Uh, the older one gets, the, the, the more exposure they have received over their lifetime. Uh, to certain risk factors. So yes, aging process is, is known to, aging is known to be a risk factor in breast cancer, in cervical cancer. It's not common to find breast cancer in a teens, in teenagers. Uh, it used to be 60s and above, but these days, breast cancer is very common in 20s, 30s, and 40s. It's still, it's still most common in the older age group, but in the last decade, it's been dropping. So okay. aging process, yes, is a risk factor. Okay, so basically you're saying things we can do to actually prevent cancer, uh, to 
have regular checks. And what else can we do apart from having regular checkups? What else can we do to actually prevent cancer? Okay, so regular checkup, diet, having a balanced diet. Mm -hmm. That simply means having different components of food that are balanced. So a bit of protein, a bit of carbohydrate. Uh, the, f the things that promote cancer are diets rich in salt, sugar, fat, oil. Uh, exercise is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, it's recommended by the American Heart Association that 30 minutes of exercise, it may be walking, it may be jogging, going to a gym, uh, is recommended on a daily basis uh, because sedentary lifestyle actually puts people at risk of cancer. Smoking, pa uh, active smoking, that's the person who's smoking. It can be cigarette, it can be snuff, or it can be, there's this tobacco nut that is common in the north. Okay. Uh, but of course it's available in the southwest too. So avoiding anything that contains tobacco. Uh, limiting inhalation of fumes from cars, from stoves. Yeah, those are things we can control. There are certain things we can't control, like aging process. Our prayer is that we all grow healthy. Yes, we can't so control it. That's the prayer. Okay, thank you very much. It's been a very exciting episode. Thank you, Dr. Molola. Thank you, Dr. Cornelius. I actually learned so much. So, cancer is no irrespective of age or status. So, to the extent that you can be deliberate of, of, about your health, but also remember, pray to God in every situation because as Psalm 127 verse 1 says, Unless the Lord builds a house, the builder builds in vain. Unless the Lord watches over a city, the watchmen watch in vain. So thank you for being with us today on Catholic Faith Forum. There you have it. All we could say today about cancer awareness and what can be done about it. And May, I'm sure you had an exciting time with us today. So for questions, inquiries, suggestions, hit us up on our social media platforms at CFF on TV. And for follow-ups or subsequent epi past episodes of the show, at Dominica Media Presents on our YouTube page and for every exciting content you can imagine. Trust me, there's a lot there you don't want to miss. So subscribe and follow us on our social media platforms. Till next time, keep being saints in jeans and shirts. Thank you. <laughs>